Well, today, let's end up doing something that uh, kids often think you're a fool in the classroom, so I'm just proving it today. All right. And uh, one of the areas in which we often do not have a whole bunch of demonstrations and labs is when we talk about bonding and how things bond. So here's a couple of things that one can do in bonding. Simple in that these are things, again, you can have in a drawer on the side. Pull out when you get to this section. So the first one, you have a spoon. And you may have seen this demonstration in a bar some night after somebody had a few drinks. And in this demonstration, you first have to wipe your nose and wipe the spoon. And then you have to blow on the spoon. And then you try to hang it from your nose. This is called spooning. Okay. You hang it from your nose. Okay. See? Now, don't the kids think you're kind of foolish when you do that? Okay. So that, that's that. But of course, bigger is always better. So. If you go and have a spatula and you end up, again, wipe the nose, wipe the spoon, blow on the spoon, and put it on your nose. Here I am. Here I am holding, the, getting the spatula stuck to my nose. I hope it isn't permanent. That would be a little bit bad. Well, you know, it's nice you've got the kids' attention, but how do you teach some chemistry with this? So you start asking some questions. Why do you think I wipe my nose? Hmm. Your skin has oils and so forth on it, and what I'm trying to do is get the mainly non-polar type oils off the surface of my nose. So that's the first thing. What does that do? That exposes the skin. Skins have lots of protein and so forth in it, lots of amine groups. Amine groups have a side in which you have a pair of electrons that can be attracted to something. Blowing on the spoon, I have put water vapor condensing on the spoon. So as I put the spoon up there, the water vapor will turn to try to attract to the amines part of my skin. And they'll have an attraction. They'll also attract to other water units in a little layer. And the surface of the spoon probably has a little bit of oxide coating, a polish type coating. I don't think it probably uh, tracks the metals real well, but if it's got a little bit of an oxide coating area there, then the waters can turn to attract to the oxide coating. So it's the skin to water, water to the spoon. So in that particular case, we've got uh, skin to the water. It's a van der Waal force, or London force often called. And water to water is hydrogen bonding, and then water to probably the oxide part is again a uh, sort of a hydrogen bonding type of thing. So you can do that with the spoon. Now one of the most expensive chemicals I have is the paper. Okay. So if your budget is low, we take newspaper. And I know we have some people around from Wisconsin here. Wisconsin is a big state in producing newspaper and newsprint. Because what do we make paper out of? Trees. We grind up the pulp of the trees. And we have International Paper and some other companies, and they end up uh, grinding this up, getting a mulch, and they have it run through belts, on belts very, very fast, and they roll it, and sheets of paper come flying off the end. So it comes flying off the end. Now, wood is mainly cellulose. Cellulose ends up being long strands of material with OH groups. There's lots of OH groups on a 
cellulose thing. So now, when it gets rolled, well, let's do the demonstration first. If I take a sheet of paper, hold it one direction, I'm going to try to tear the piece of paper straight. So I'm going to try and tear it. Get it started here a little bit. I'm going to try and see if I can tear it straight. Now that's not bad. Right? Torn pretty straight. Let's take and turn it 90 degrees. Do the same thing. So, 90 degrees. I'm going to try and tear the paper straight. And I will play it straight. I will try to do it straight. So, I got to get started. There I am. Oh, didn't do too well there. I'll go over here. Start it. I cannot tear the paper straight in the 90 degree turn. So, now let's think about the bonding. The part which was torn pretty straight has strands of cellulose running this way. This paper came down the roller like this and got sent off the belt and made into rolls. As it did that, these strands were pretty much side by side. But they're complete in themselves, the cellulose is, so it's just London forces between the strands here. And so paper tears real easy. The London forces aren't very strong as you go along. But when you turn it 90 degrees, you're not tearing along the strand, you are tearing across the strand. And there we're tearing covalent bonds. Now the covalent bonds are much, much stronger. Now it turns out paper is real thin, so there's not a whole bunch of them, so we can easily tear it. But you cannot tear it straight. You, you break one here and it jumps over to the side a little bit and you have a curved surface. Now, we can do one more thing with the paper. If we wet the paper, and now I decide to tear it, how does that compare to the other tearing? It's a lot easier to tear paper that's wet than paper that is dry. Now, think back on what we have. We have cellulose strands up and down, and we have OH groups. And what do waters do? They end up attracting to the OH groups along here and allow it to easily tear apart with the attractions of the water molecules to the OHs.